we head on out to Oxnard, California for Patrick Walker at Voice of the Star from DallasCowboys.com. After the big brawl that happened yesterday, Patrick, take us inside the Cowboys fight. Well, first and foremost, I love it uh, because everyone came out healthy, which is always going to be key. Micah, his hands are fine after throwing those hands at the helmet uh, of Tyler Biadish. But uh, it's 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 something that's been boiling over or ready to boil over for the entirety of camp. Once these guys put pads on and started hitting each other, uh, it was only a matter of time before eventually something was going to spill over. And funnily enough, before practice, but after the press conference, we talked with Mike McCarthy and it was asked to him, you know, how proud are you of these guys being able to walk that line of chippiness without it boiling over? And McCarthy smirked and he said, well, it's actually great um, that it's not happened, but you probably jinxed us. And then, of course, there you go. Uh, so not one, but two separate scuffles, the first involving Sam Williams versus Brock Hoffman, and then Tyler Biadish comes in with the blindside block. Uh, good form, though. Um, Demarcus Lawrence comes up and, and you know challenges Tyler to protect Sam, and uh, second time around, it was Biadish versus Michael Parsons. Michael got a couple of blows off, and then Sam repaid the favor against Tyler. It's offense versus defense. It's iron versus iron, and, and guess what? The science is when iron meets iron and starts scraping against each other, you get sparks. Sometimes sparks make fires, uh, but it's great news for the Cowboys because it shows that they're highly competitive. They're, you know, fed up with being with the narrative nationally about them being soft. And and that goes for the offense as well. We knew the defense were, was full of dogs, fellas, and then they added dogs and Gilmore and Mozzie Smith. Question was, would the offense be able to step up and, and match serve? And the offense has for every haymaker thrown at them, be it a, a great play or trash talking throughout this camp, offense has has met that challenge with big plays of their own and trash talking of their own and so they're just ready for fresh meat and like J. Ron Kerr said after practice that starts September 10th when they face the New York Giants he said the defense is not taking blank from any of the 32 teams and then people are saying well there are only 31 other teams he repeated 32 teams he's not taking it from his own offense either so let's play some football this ain't a pillow fight let's go <laughs> the chippiest person out at training camp it's felt like this entire time has been biotish like the guy i keep seeing getting mixed up in, yeah. in the little shoving matches we've gotten which have been nothing huge but the guy who's who's most frequently been involved in little scuffles has been biotish is this just an embrace of of a new edge has he felt the need to step up and and just you think defend the interior with zach martin being out for much of camp and he's felt like hey this is on my shoulders with two young guys on either side or, or is this just an embrace of, you know, a, a new attitude? I think the attitude has been there, but in order to be able to display that attitude, you got to have the, the confidence uh, and you have to feel like you're the guy, right? So prior to last season, uh, he was still feeling his way out. And of course, he came in uh, on the back end of the Travis Frederick career. And of course, we all miss Fred Beard, but he came in on the back end of that. And there were a lot of question marks on if he can be the starting center. Well, he he wins the starting center job. And then the question was, can he be uh, kind of that de deliver that ferociousness in between the lines like you would see uh, the normally quiet Travis Frederick would do. But when the lines, you know, when the whistle was blown and it was time to play ball, Travis Frederick was an absolute monster. So coming off of a Pro Bowl season, Tyler Biotis is and. You also mix that into the fact that Zach Martin just now got here because of the holdout. So, yes, Tyler Biadish also had to show the younger guys this is how you stand up and protect the the defense, the offensive interior. This is how it has to be to keep the quarter, quarterback clean, to open up these run lanes. We got to match these guys because we're going up against Mozzie Smith and Jonathan Hankins and Tank and Micah Parsons and Dante Fowler and Neville Gallimore. Like these, this is a kennel of dogs coming at us, and we're not going to sit back and just take this and let let them talk trash and win all of these reps. So what you're seeing from Tyler Biadish is he's starting to feel like, hey, on a team full of hymns, I'm him as well. And that's what's kind of spilling over. But excellent point there, Bobby, because when you at when we asked Micah yesterday, we asked Jay Ron, asked a couple of uh, other players, uh, quiet as it's kept, Tyler Biadish has been simmering uh, <laughs> as one of the main parts in some of these near scuffles before actually being a centerpiece in both of the scuffles yesterday. So Tyler Biadish, a um, little bit of Fred Beard being channeled <laughs> within him, and you got to love that. We're talking with Patrick Walker from DallasCowboys.com. Pat, the, the most interesting thing to me, or the most surprising thing, I guess, that I saw yesterday at, at practice during those scuffles was 
was the fact that Dak Prescott came in and and mm. escorted Micah Parsons away from the scuffle because I was under the impression mm. per Skip Bayless that Dak Prescott is jealous of Micah Parsons and threatened by him and and you would <laughs> think he'd just hang him out to dry there to break his hand on Tyler Biotish's <laughs> helmet. You know, it, it's funny how those who um, whore for engagement, um, <laughs> how they get so many people who don't know better to bite on that bait. But we know better, as you just stated, as it's been pointed out in the videos uh, of the scuffle. Uh, Michael Parsons, after, you know, the, the two piece he tried to throw to Tyler Biadish, who was the first person in there pulling him out and not giving him soft love, giving him tough love, telling him, hey, this is we got to keep this. We got to keep this anger focused. We got to keep it directed where it needs to go. Gave him a little tough love shove after that, saying basically get back on your side of the ball. And Micah, Micah agreed. And he went back to you know, practice went on. That comes with having command of your locker room. You don't calm down a guy like Micah Parsons if he doesn't respect you, right? He's a lion, for, for lack of a better way to put it. And have you ever seen a hyena calm down a lion? No, it takes another lion to calm down a lion. So there is no question inside this building, inside this locker room, inside this organization, who is the leader in that locker room? And it is Dak Prescott, hands down. So for all of the national narratives, oh, they don't respect Dak and look at the disrespect. I get it. You, you, you know, you want your engagement and you want the ad revenue that comes off of that way to go, Elon. But <laughs> at the end of the day, the reality remains. This is Dak Prescott's team, point blank, period. Patrick Walker, voice of the star on Twitter here on Sean and RJ with Bobby in Choppy's chair. Who was your biggest surprise? What was your biggest surprise from camp? Uh, overall, I would probably have to go with good or bad. Um, you know what? John Stevens Jr. keeps popping in my head. I mean, every time I'm asked a question like this or similar to this, uh, that kid just keeps popping up because he's had one of, if not arguably, the best camp of a non-star player. I think, obviously, Micah Parsons is camp MVP as far as play is concerned. Trevon Diggs is co-MVP. Um, Brandon Cooks is up there. But if you're talking non-star players and particularly players that are young who came in on the bubble and you didn't know what they're going to do or not do, for me, it's it's probably going to be John Stevens. I, I predicted DeMarvion Overshone would, would be a problem um, when I mocked him to the Cowboys. So, But John Stevens Jr., he's going to make for a very, very difficult conversation in that tight end room when it comes down um, to getting that roster down because you got Jake Ferguson, who was my TE1 coming in. He's proving that to be the case. Schoolmaker, second-round pick. He'll be worked in as he recovers from his plantar fasciitis, but obviously he's going to make the roster. I believe Peyton Hendershot can and probably will, but then it's Sean McEwen, who's one of the better blockers and has a long-standing relationship with Dak Prescott and the, the front office in this organization versus John Stevens, who just got here, but he obviously has the talent and the ability and the frame to be a problem in Mike McCarthy's play calling scheme. So, uh, I'm going to go with John Stevens Jr. because of the amount of waves that he's made so far. Are there any guys we didn't see last week against Jacksonville that you think might have a chance to play this weekend against Seattle? Ronald Jones is a likely no. I asked McCarthy directly about Ronald Jones yesterday, and he said, quote, unquote, I don't see it. So I'm going to pencil Ronald Jones as being out. Bad news for him. That's two out of the three preseason games he's not going to participate in. Uh, whew, makes it very difficult for him as far as challenging for that RB2 uh, position. But I'm going to go with Junior Fajoko. Um, Junior Fajoko was not present on the field for the Cowboys against the Jaguars because of a shoulder injury that he had been battling. But he was back on the field this week, particularly yesterday, doing both individual drills and team reps. I posted a, a, a couple of videos of Junior Fajoko matched up against Josh Ball as he works his way back in. Um, and on one of those reps, he just absolutely blew right past Josh Ball. I mean, the get-off was ridiculous. The bend was was there. The motor was there, and he won the rep hands down. So I believe that Junior Fajoko will be on the field against the Seahawks, barring um, anything that happens today as far as that shoulder is concerned. And I'm looking forward to seeing that because if he can come on strong, in addition to every other player we're talking about on that defensive line, I mean, how crazy is this depth, fellas? 
Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's something that's going to solidify things for the defensive line. And of course, that's something Dan Quinn wants uh, with his defensive yes. line background and everything else with adding dirty. I, I'm curious about the the performance of Jalen Brooks mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, Jalen Tolbert and two guys who, you know, Tolbert who stepped up in the preseason game. Brooks, who maybe didn't carry over the practices into the game the same way. I The sense I got from talking to some folks is like maybe there was some – Maybe there's some jitters there. First game, a little nervous, you know, uh, and approaching the game that way. How has Brooks carried things over into practice this week? And has Tolbert, you know, we saw the viral catch in the back of the end zone. Has Tolbert maintained the the positive, you know, things that we've seen from him into the practices this week? Tolbert absolutely has. And, and I've just started calling him the smooth criminal after that after that catch in the end zone with the, the Michael Jackson lean. I mean, good grief. I, that level of confidence. I mean, he's just playing football. Like I said, he looks like a football player now as opposed to someone who's trying to play football. So I love it for Jalen Tolbert. His trajectory continues in practice this week. He's really building and building and building. Jalen Brooks, I can agree that maybe there were some jitters going on there. And I said the same about Eric Scott Jr. Uh, because I believe Eric Scott Jr. will ultimately be an impact player for the Cowboys but uh, come, these guys coming from smaller schools and now here you are AT&T Stadium the bright lights are on for the first time so there are going to be a bit of nerves there I think both will improve but to Jalen to the point about Jalen Brooks there was there were a couple of plays where it, it could have been made to Brooks if the throw was a little bit better from Will Greer who had an up and down game had his downs had his ups but there was one play in particular that I, I like to point out when it comes to Brooks he ran a crisp route he did what he was supposed to do he beat his defender on the uh, it was a mid right, mid outside route on the right hand side, um, but the throw just wasn't there. Throw sailed out of bounds, and if that throw was made, then Jalen Brooks gets on the board. Maybe it builds his confidence a little bit, and then you know butterfly effect, and maybe he starts to have a better game from that point forward. Didn't happen, so butterfly effect went in the opposite direction. But I look for Jalen Brooks and Eric Scott Jr. as well to be absent of those jitters going into game two against the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, I think they're going to, you know, remember that, hey, this is just football. This is what you were brought here to do. And I expect bigger games from them because Jalen Brooks has been one of the, the headline players throughout this, the, throughout the totality of this camp. I don't expect that it's not going to transfer over to game. So hopefully it will. When are you getting out of there for good? Tomorrow morning, okay, give or take. We are flying out to Seattle. Um, I want to say around noon Pacific time. The crews have already started to pack up effective yesterday. Um, so things are starting to shut down here. Yesterday was the final padded practice. Obviously, I think the Cowboys will have a walkthrough today, maybe a mini walkthrough tomorrow. And then we're headed up to Seattle. Uh, primetime game against the Seahawks. And then we'll be back on Sunday, early Sunday morning for good. Three practices in Frisco next week. Those are open to the public, so make sure you come on out, check out the Cowboys, and uh, as they start to get ready for week one. I mean, there'll be the game against Las Vegas, but based on what I saw yesterday, bring on week one. <laughs> awesome stuff as always. Thank you, man. Safe travels. Yeah, talk to you guys soon. <laughs>